Thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. We did it guys, so thank you. And new intro coming soon. Okay guys, so I don't know if you saw this or not, but in one of my previous videos, I talked about getting the necessary certification through the FAA in order to be able to fly my drone. And now, what, three weeks later, I am pleased to say that I passed my FAA knowledge tests. So in this video, I kind of want to just talk about a few things that helped me pass and will hopefully help you pass as well. Unfortunately for me, I still cannot fly my drone yet because once you pass the knowledge test, then you have to apply for a license and wait up to 10 business days for them to complete your verification. So then they'll give you the digital file for your temporary license and then after that then they'll send the actual license but once you get your temporary license then you can actually fly so still have to wait for that but the good news is I don't have to do anything else so all I have to do is just wait so first I want to talk about a certain manual that is very helpful when studying I'll link that down in the description down below and that is the book that they give you at the test to actually use while you're doing the test for example a question will reference a certain figure usually an airport map but that booklet PDF version of that is down in the description below and also another thing don't quote me on this I'm not completely sure that I'm correct on this, but on the PSI exams website, a few weeks ago there had been two different unmanned aircraft licenses. One was the UAG small license for that, and then the other one was unmanned aircraft recurrent general and I believe that was the test that you would have to take every three years to maintain your certification. And that one is not there anymore on the website. It's just gone. My guess is you don't have to take a recurrent test anymore unless they're still going to add a different one. I don't know. The first time that I went to the testing center to take my test, I failed. When I came back the second time, the guy who was running the test told me that after I'd been in there, a lot of other people had as well and were shocked at how low their scores were because he said that this test was usually a pretty easy test to pass and that his suspicion was that they've changed some of the tests now to make that more complicated so then you don't have to do recurrent that's just the way i understand it regardless though i was shocked the first time i took it and uh, i don't know exactly what it is but the practice exam on the official psi exams website is just not even close to the actual test. The actual test is so much harder than that practice exam. I'm not sure why because I got great grades on the practice exam and then the actual test, no I didn't the first time. So a thing that helped me a lot was in that booklet that they give you at the test there's actually 
a legend that explains some stuff that you'll see on the aeronautical maps. Legend 1. You can look that up in the table of contents. And it is so helpful. I haven't seen anyone talk about this in a video, but I figured out after a while that there is an easy way to tell the difference between Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class E airspace, and that is simply by the color of the ring around it. I didn't see anyone talk about that in a video. Maybe I just missed it, but I thought that you had to memorize that yourself, and I did, and then, thankfully, I found Legend 1, it says the colors for the rings, so definitely check that out. That should help a lot, for sure.